Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Techie Blossom. With this video, we are starting series of advanced topics in block library for Flutter. Before watching this video, I recommend that you watch the complete beginner series on block. Unit testing is very important for any app. So make sure to watch this video till the end and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. While testing blocks, we need to first remind ourselves that even though block is considered to be into the presentation layer, we will not write test to test the UI. We will write block test to test our logic handling. Like what happens when an event is triggered? Are the expectations met? Are the expected mocked calls made? Such things. If your project does not have any test running, you will need to create a test folder alongside lib. If you have watched part 1 and part 2 of beginner block management library series, then you know that for easiness we kept qubit and block in the main.dart along with widgets. But since now we are in advanced series, we should also know where we should ideally keep them. So we will move the block related code to another file, likes underscore block dot dart. This will also help us in testing this class separately. Now you will create a test file for qubit or block that you want to test. While writing test for a file or class, keep the test hierarchy same as that in lib. It will help in coverage. We will create test folder inside the qubit folder and then create likes qubit test dot dart. Let's write our first test. We will be testing whether the initial state is 0 or not. For this, we require a dependency test. So add this dev dependency in the pubswag.yml file. Run the flutter pub get command. Come back to the test file. Create a main function. This function will execute all tests present in this file. There can be only one main function per test file. To organize our test better, we can create groups with a description. The second parameter is a function and will contain test. Since we want to test likes block here, we will need to initialize it. We are initializing it with 5 as the initial state. Now use test function from the test package and give it a description. The second parameter here also is a function where we will write what this test should do. As this is a pretty simple test, we will just expect state of likes block to be 5. Run the test either by ID prompts or directly on terminal. We have all the tests passed here. and You can see the group description and test description that we provided. To run in terminal, you can run flutter test command. And this is our first test. Almost in each of our blocks in the app, you will have a test case like this. This was an easy example where the state was a primitive type. But in cases where you need to compare non-primitive states, you can use runtime type for the state. We use this trick in movie app series a lot. We compared runtime type of movie detail qubit with movie detail initial class. Now let's move to other parts of block testing. For that, you will need to add block underscore test as a dependency in the pubspec.yml file and update dependencies. Why do we need this library? This library creates block specific test cases. It provides some key functions for you to use when you test block like act, expect, seed, verify, etc. It makes sure that once you have acted on block, that is, you have fired an event, a state is always emitted. Once it evaluates the expect action, it closes the block so you don't have to do it. We can use block test function like this. We have to give instance of block in the build function. Ideally, you would work on mock of blocks. We will see that a bit later. Here, we can also work with real instance because we are not dealing with DB calls or repositories or any other such component. Let's see what attributes are of block test function and how we can utilize them. First, the setup attribute. This function will run before running the test case. You can have one set of function for one test, things like when then statements can be here. Like in case of movie app, we can use setup to specify when get coming soon mock is called, then the answer is left off app error. Second attribute is the build attribute. The build attribute as you have seen should return a block instance. It can be anyone, real or mocked. The block test function uses this block instance to perform actions, compare states and errors and at last to close the block. The third attribute is the act attribute. The act attribute is just like when in normal test. This also takes a function. It gives you back the block instance that you have returned from the build attribute. You can trigger events on the block or call functions if you are testing qubit. The fourth is the expect attribute. The expect attribute is similar to expect statements that you generally have in test cases. This is also a function and you have to pass a list of states that can emit when your event is triggered. For us, since our next and the only state should be 6 here, as we have initial state as 5, 
we can write 6 here. Let's run the test. As you can see the test passes. Now let's check for 7 for fun and this time the test fails. Let's make it more fun. I will change the block code to emit two states when liked event is triggered, emitting another increment on the state. And in the test, we will change the expect to have 6 and 7 as the states. Our test passes when we run the test again and you can see change object logging the changes in the state from 6 to 7 as a result of second emit statement. Now I am reverting the code back to normal. Let's move to the next attribute, the seed attribute. The seed attribute is an interesting one. Consider that your block had two events, event 1 and event 2. On event 1, the block transitions from state A to state B, where state A is the initial state and on event 2, the block transitions from state B to state C. So while testing, if you are testing that, whether a transition to state C happens or not, then you will always need to trigger event 1 and then event 2. This is not required because in seed attribute, you can return a state from where this test should start. The block test function will make sure that before expect statements, your state is transitioned from initial state to seed state. In our example, if we give seed value as 7, the expected state would be 8 and not 6. Let's run it. And as you can see, first there is a change from 5 to 7 without event. Then because you have triggered liked event, there is a transition from 7 to 8 and as a result there is a change. Now let's talk about errors attribute. Before starting, let's tweak our code a bit by not emitting the state when there is an error. We will create another test now to test the exception scenario. Change the description to should throw exception when state is 5 and change the seed to 4. Now when the event is triggered, the next state is 5 and our code will throw exception. So we will look for errors this time. The errors can take a list of objects. So check whether the error is type of exception and run the test. The skip attribute. When you have multiple events or if you want to test if there are no further states emitted after a certain number of states, you can use skip. Let's consider another example. This time we will fire set event first and then liked event. I will tell you the reason why I am not using liked event twice. So as a result of set and liked events, I expect 10 and 11 as the state of block. Here I can use skip and give it a value 1. This will skip one state change and we can now expect only the last state that is 11. The default value of a skip is 0. Now coming back to the reason why I didn't use liked twice. Because when skip compares liked event, both the events are equal because I haven't extended events with equitable. That's why using set and liked worked because they both are unequal. The weight attribute. Now there can be a scenario when you have a asynchronous operation while processing the event. Let's create a scenario like that. I am adding a duration of 2000 milliseconds while processing liked event. Now when you run the test that expects 6 value after 5, it will fail. The actual state is empty. So we will use weight attribute here. At a duration of 2100 milliseconds slightly greater than 2000 milliseconds that we used in our block. So now our test passes. Remember, these tests are not good. You should generally mock the async calls for the test to run quickly. I have showcased this for demo purpose, but I generally don't do this. The verify attribute. Use verify attribute when you want to verify whether the use cases or repository methods were called or not, or how many times they were called. When we test these things, we should definitely have mocks. For example, I am considering an example from movie app. Here, we have get playing mock use case and we are verifying that it is called one time with no params instance. The get playing mock extends mock from mocky2, but you can also use mock tail as well. The tier done attribute. When you are done with executing the test, you might need to close some resources so that you don't mess with other test cases. In that case, you can use tier done attribute. The tag attribute. Many of you might not know about use of this attribute. I also didn't know it until I tried it out for this tutorial. First, let's see what happens when you run your test with flutter test command. One more note that I missed before is that you should use the block instance provided by the functions and not the one you created at a group level. Otherwise, you will see an error that says block cannot add event because it is closed. Well, now let's see tags. As you can see, I am adding tags to our test. Two tests have increment tags, 
and one has skip tag. Together with this, you need to have a dart underscore test.yml file with tags declared there. Now run dart test hyphen t increment and you will notice only two tests are running. It picks up only those tests that have increment tag. Similarly, when you run test with a skip tag, you will see one test running with skip tag. It's a nice feature to easily test some specific test. And that is it. We have covered all things of block test library in depth today. I hope you like this video and will like it and share it among your circle. Also, let us know what you think about this series and this video in particular. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.